Good morning. We've got a busy day here today. I am uh, I'm still at home waiting for my wife to get back from dropping the boys off at school because my daughter is still sleeping. But um, as soon as she gets back, we're going to get to work. Meanwhile, there's Dad. First field work of the year. Getting some wheat top dress. So we'll go check that out in a little bit. Okay, well, five minutes later, he's made it that far. We're not off to a good start. I wonder if he needs help. Yep, he does. Ah, we got him. He um, had a setting in the monitor was, was off. He couldn't figure out how to fix it. The shifts for moving the guidance line over left and right were not working. So we got him set up with that. and He should be good to go. Um, Phil is taking uh, one of our semi trucks down to Berkey to hook onto our tender trailer because we have a lot of wheat down there. And so we're going to have to haul some some 28 and some uh, ATS uh, ammonium thiosulfate down there to top dress that wheat. Now we are getting a load of 28 directly from our supplier taken and putting in our um, five, the two 2,500 gallon tanks that's down there. So we'll have some, we don't have to take it all, but um, that's what they're doing this morning okay so dad's top dressing wheat phil's going to berkey to uh get our semi tender trailer and to uh make sure that the load of 28 gets put in the right spot okay there's dad in the background tomorrow they're calling for rain actually overnight tonight they're calling for rain um we have not had any rain in over a week it's not really wet right now like it's about as dry as you could expect. Today is March 25th, I'm pretty sure. I threw a shovel in the back. We're going to go dig around. We're going to look a little bit. If we are going to plant any March beans, today's the day. Today's the day. So we also have some more mapping to do with the gator here. I've got my list of fields. And um, we need to get that done regardless. We might also throw the clover cedar, uh, the, the cedar box in the back of the gator and try and get that done today. Uh, Brock's gonna be here later. But the first thing we gotta figure out is, is it dry enough to attempt to plant some beans? If it is, that means we have to hook the disc up. We gotta check it out real fast. We've got a disc this field. We've got to get the bean planter ready to go, which it is, and it's hooked up, um, but it's not 100%, you know, let's go. And um, we've got to treat the beans. I've got, to, I've got to pull a couple of the boxes out that we're going to put in this field and run them through the seed treater. So, I don't know. I don't know how this is going to go, but we're going to go out here and find out real fast whether or not our day is extremely busy or just kind of busy so this is the field that i'm uh targeting we could look around a little more if this one happens to not go but um this is where we did our early beans two years ago so it would be a good one and rather than a 20 acre block here we're gonna plant the whole thing we'll do an 80. moment of truth i purposely bought a brought a shovel that won't dig too deep that's not bad so we can plant into cold soils we cannot plant into cold, wet soils. Oh, that's dry. That will go. It's not a go yet, but that will go. We got to walk around and or, uh, dry around. Man, that soil's cold. Oh, it's cold. We got to drive around a little bit more, find the wet spots. It's March, so we're being conservative here. Kind of. Does that make sense? Okay, well, I'm trying to find the wettest spots that I can, and this one's the wettest, but that ground still crumbles apart. It's not gooey. We can do this. We can do this today. All right. So, we're going to go treat the beans right now because that's got to happen first. It's going to take me a little bit to get set up because we're going to add some more stuff that we put in on some of these other ones. When 
Brock gets here in a half an hour or so, I'm going to have him get the 8430 hooked up to the disc. And uh, we're going to get this field disc down. It's going to be later this afternoon or evening before we start to plan. Uh, but yeah, uh, we're, we're going we're gonna to try. I'm not guaranteeing it, but we might try. I think we can do it. Okay, uh, Dad had a leaky uh, check valve on the sprayer. We got that tightened up. He did. I did nothing other than talk to him. We was doing a little bit of math on uh, what exactly we need to get taken to Berkey, and so we were trying to figure out that a little bit. He needs to take just a little bit uh, on the sprayer with him, and then we'll have enough to do everything down there. Um, so when Brock gets here, I'm going to have him hook up the disc. We're going to work that field down, and then we're going to look at it. We're going to see, and we're going to see how it goes when we're disking. But it's a plan. Now, as to why, I'm sure that I'm getting get that question a lot. Why? Why would you want to plant beans in March when it's cold? Yeah, that's a that's valid. That is a valid question. We'll talk about it later because I don't have time right now. Uh, right now, we're gonna go down and, and get the beans treated in case we do end up planting them today. We're gonna need them treated. That is key component to this. Okay, um, it's taken me a little while here. We've had to do a little extra mixing this morning because we are loading these beans up. Um, seed treatments is one of the most important things when you're talking about planting beans ultra early, like we're thinking about today. And so um, I was debating on a couple of things. The, the, the base treatment, the apex, was a no-brainer. Like, that has to go on. Um, I also have Saltro, and... While we don't fight a ton of SDS, it tends to hit earlier planted beans worse than later planted beans, and any extra fungicide protection that we can put on them to keep these beans healthy, because they're going to sit in the ground for at least a month, um, is a good thing. So we put some Saltro, and that's what's in tank one, Saltro and the um, Apex. And then I have the Heads Up. The Heads Up protects against white mold. We fight white mold. Um, I thought it helped last year. It's debatable, uh, I guess, but it's relatively cheap, and so I decided we're going to throw that in. I'm going to use that on most of our beans. I'm not going to use Saltro on most of our beans. Um, but So we threw that into tank two. The one that I was really questioning was my inoculant. So I've got to succeed. It's a biological. It is a living organism, organism that is to help the uh, soybean roots. Um, basically, it colonizes the roots and fixes atmospheric nitrogen, providing it available to the plant. And so, uh, while I put that on almost all of our beans, and I've got it to put on all of our beans, we're planting them in March, into very cold soils. And I don't know that that bacteria is going to live uh, to make it to the point when the roots are actually really growing and going to uh, be effective. So I was debating on that one. I decided I have it. The chemical doesn't keep, or the, the inoculant does not keep till next year, so we've got to use it up. We're going to put it on. So we put that in here as well. So we've got our heads up and our inoculant in this tank. I had to go through and calibrate because it's the first time we've used this and get everything primed up. But, um, yeah, we're just getting everything mixed here right now. I've got our two boxes out that we're going to treat. That should be enough to plant that whole field. Um, so I think we are good to go. I've got some pitchers to clean out now because I had chemical left in that tank, so I had to drain it out, and then we mix the right amounts to put back in because it's a combination to have exactly the right amounts versus when all we're using is this doesn't matter how much is in there the, the pump will meter it out and it's fine we can just make sure we don't run out in this case the ratio has to be right and so we have to measure it out exactly all right well we got our two boxes treated a little cleanup and stuff to do here and then we need to go check on brock oh boy looks like brock's struggling Not a lot of reason for a backhoe to be back here, but let's go see what we can do to help. Well, he shifter down, bub. He did struggle a little bit, but he got it. So he's gonna pull that up to the uh, front of the shop there, check all the tires and grease everything. We put new blades and bearings in on the disc last fall, before last fall, so those should all be good. They are greaseless bearings. Uh, the discs should be in, in pretty good shape. Actually, everything should be in pretty decent shape but we just need to check it out we didn't use the packer in the fall we do in the spring so it's spring it is after march 21st so it is spring so let's, it's time to start planting i guess all right 
I've got um, four fields that are close that I want to map real quick while we've got a little bit of time yet. Um, I want to put this monitor in the uh, 8R bean planting tractor. And if, if we're going to start planting beans today, well, we're going to need a monitor. So we better get our mapping done. We're not done with the gator. We've got the clover seed to spread yet, which, yeah, we might get there today too. But we can use the, uh, the old Gen 4 monitor. Old Gen 4 monitor, that's, yeah. The other one that's really nice and good um, can come in here instead if we put this one in the, the other tractor. So we're gonna, the other two fields are just across the back road here from this field that we were thinking about planting today. By other two fields, I mean two of the fields that I need to map. All right, we got our uh, uh, mapping done that we can do easily today. There's two or three or four more fields that need to be done, should be done, but I got those four done. I got three more on my list that I didn't don't have done yet, but they're kind of a long ways away. I'm not taking the time to do them today. So I'm going to get a jump drive, transfer all that data off of there, get it uh, loaded up to mine John Deere, and then that display and that receiver are going on our soybean planting tractor. Feels weird to think that we might plant beans and I'm still walking around in my car heart with a hoodie on, but it actually has warmed up quite a bit today. Rock doesn't have a coat on, so, you know. Um, I think that's ready to go. We had to, uh, I wanted to put that MTG in it that I got with my, uh, G uh, uh that essentials kit, whatever. I ended up needing to swap the one with the 8R and this one to make the cables work right and have everything set up the way that I need it to be. Um, but that's done computer's on there it's ready to go brock got the disc and the packer ready to go so we're good there it is lunch time and while i don't really have time for lunch we're gonna go grab some food real quick um and then we're gonna come back and we're gonna get the disc in the field and start it mo moving see how that goes and that will tell us a lot i have already heard from other people in the um in the vicinity that we're not the only ones thinking this way uh, there's other ground being worked, so let's go. Phil's back and got it loaded up with the uh, fertilizer we need for the wheat down to Berkey. Dad has got all the wheat up here sprayed, which we don't have that many acres up here. Um, but he is done with it, and he's got to take a little bit down on the sprayer, uh, fertilizer on the sprayer to have enough to finish down to Berkey today. We've got 285 acres there. Uh, if you're new to the channel and you don't know what I'm talking about when I say down to Berkey, uh, we've got just under 600 acres that we farm um, that's about 35 miles east of here. It's uh, my grandpa's place where my dad grew up and we still have some ground there. So, But it's a little bit of a haul to get everything and you know, so it is half wheat this year. So dad's going to go down and put the first shot of nitrogen on that. We are going to the field. Well, let's do this. But first, we are going to the fuel barrel. Quarter of a tank. Might be enough. We're not going to take that chance, though. I think we've got enough hose here that I don't have to actually turn this around. We're going to find out. Never mind, Brock did already do it. Our gauge doesn't work. I forgot that our gauge doesn't work and we didn't fix it this winter. Why didn't we fix that? All right, well, we didn't fix it. Okay, we're full. We can go to the field now. We are started. We're a little deep, so we're adjusting depths and trying to get this tool adjusted where we want it. Um, but the dust is flying, so I'll, we'll show you here in a minute when we get everything working. Well, we're still a little deep with our setting, but I just lifted it up manually with the hydraulics here. And uh, it looks like how I want it. When we get to the end here, we'll stop, adjust some more on the tool, and get out and take a look at, uh, at the job we're doing. But the dust is flying. It's not wet. We just went through one of the wettest spots on the farm right there, and dust flew all the way through it. So ground conditions are pretty good. Pretty good. Didn't record any of that, dang it. We'll start over. All right. Um, we made another adjustment on the uh, on the disc there. And I just did this, but we'll do it again because I forgot to push the button the first time. Um, but, yeah, this looks 
this looks really good so it's nice and loose we're taking out all the, the see over here this is what we're starting with right we still got some stalks stuck in the ground um just this is hard it would be difficult to plant into this it's rough we got these knobs and stuff like that versus over here everything is nice and loose the stalks are totally gone or laying on the ground nice loose dirt it's nice and even across the bottom i don't have waves ah, perfect perfect planting bed from soybeans a lot of residue for corn but hey that's what happens when you had corn here last year you get a bunch of residue so we're gonna see if our adjustments have gotten where we want it or if we need to keep going a little bit but we're at least close We've got a tire rubbing. Right here. Why? I noticed smoke. I'm like, that, that doesn't look like dust. Yeah. Like, Ooh. That's yeah. Hot. That's real hot. That was dumb. Why? Because we're. No. Shouldn't be because we're shallower. That should make them down farther. What's going on here? What in the heck? What's going on? Something's not right. This was the This tire is on backwards. The the valve stems on the inside and this should be on the outside and the dish is different. That's why. When the heck did we have this rim off though? That's what I don't understand. Why is it like that? So this is the one you redid. Yeah, this one over here, but look at this look at the gap between here versus this side. We gotta flip that tire. I don't understand how it got put on like that, but or when did we do that? We used this since then, haven't we? I haven't. I haven't ran this since it's got new blades on. I know, but we ran it last fall. When did we replace yeah. this uh, hub? Was long before that. I don't understand how that happens. We replaced that hub when. Yeah. All right. Well, whatever. I know what the problem is, so we're gonna run her back up to the shop, flip a tire, and then go. I still can't figure out why we had this tire off or how this happened, but it's wrong and it's an easy fix. So we got a stand put under the frame and just set it down so there's no pressure on the tires. We'll let Brock get the lug nuts off, flip it, put it back on. I'm glad we caught it as quick as we did so that we didn't, you know, blow the tire. Those ones, as you can imagine, are not cheap. Okay, we got our tire put back on and flipped around and we should be good to go. Let's give her a shot. Take two. Good news, our tire is not smoking anymore. We've still got lots of dust. We're getting the depth adjusted pretty close. Still a touch deep on the stop, but we've got it, we've got it close. I like the looks of it. I think we're doing a good job. We're gonna do this whole field. 75 acres in this field. And uh, with any luck, It'll be planted by the end of the day. All right, well, I've got everything set up how we want it. We're gonna let Brock take off in this and we're gonna go get a planter ready. It'll take us a little time, so let's watch him go here. Yep, like it, like it. Excellent. So we're pulling that packer, just kind of helps push everything down makes it nice and level and smooth and it's just a beautiful seed bed i like it a lot even some of this stuff that looks slabby and stuff it breaks right apart um you know it's there's moisture here there's plenty of moisture it's not like we're overly dry some people would get worried that you know we're too dry for this time of year i'm not worried about that at all i've never been worried about that but yeah this is i don't like bigs stuff like that. I need it to break apart. We don't want goo. It's not goo. It's just, we couldn't have been out here yesterday. It's okay, but we couldn't have been here yesterday. Most of it is really, really nice. I definitely don't need the Carhartt anymore. It's much, much warmer now, so that's good. Warming the ground up. If I remember, we'll bring a thermometer 
and stick it in the ground because somebody's going to ask me, what's the soil temp? I don't know and I don't care. It's cold. Uh, what I care about is it dry. I will not plant into wet conditions. I will plant into cold conditions. So let's take the gator back up. Let's get the bean planter out, get the GPS stuff moved from the gator to the tractor. We got to put the plates in the planter. We got to get a seed tender out, get the boxes put on it, load it up, a lot of to do to get ready. So I would like to wait as long as possible to come out here and start planting because I want, um, I want this to air out a little bit. Just take any little tackiness out of it that there might be. So, arch beans gonna happen. Well, we got a planter out. We've got the bean planter out. We gotta get our plates and put them in. We need to check tire pressures on everything. We need to air up the airbags on the uh, down pressure system. Uh, what else do we need to do? We'll see. We'll see from there. I need a GPS receiver on the tractor yet. We're getting closer. I went through and uh, checked all the tires, added a little bit of air to some. We've got the plates in. I also made sure that they are all set in the same depth and down pressure on the closing wheels is all set on them. Um, we'll have to dig and verify depth and everything once we get in the field, but at least we're starting in a decent spot. And they're not all over the place and all different. I believe the planter is ready. We need some seed, so. I hooked onto the seed tender. It's clean, so that's good. Shut that door before we do anything and spill a bunch. Um, I'm, I'm guessing, let's, let's see here. I'm pretty sure the battery's dead, would be dead. Yeah, so we're gonna have to jump it to uh, get our auger folded up. But let's see if we can make the motor run. Oh, uh, we should check the oil, we should check the oil. It's down here. Oh yeah, it's got oil. Got lots of oil. Okay. Come on. There we go. Choke it. Yeah, this might be a challenge. Or not. It helps when you turn the switch on and uh, it took three pulls. Excellent. Okay, so just a dead battery. We'll just put some jumper cables on it or whatever, just to get it folded up the first time, and then we'll throw the charger on it when we've got time. So I know what happens when I cut corners trying to go from here to the farm. I didn't check the tire pressures. I did kick them all. They all have air. I think we'll make it. Also, I'm not going to bother putting lids on these boxes, because I'm not worried about them getting rain down between here and there. I think we'll be okay. But I've been wrong before. Let's see. Oh, they didn't stick too bad. Good. I was a little worried. These ones were really wet coming out of the treater. Yeah, a little clumpy. They'll break up fine, but they were these beans were wet because of all the treatment we're putting on them. You know what we should check before we put seed in there? That the doors are closed. Yeah. Uh-huh. That would have been bad. All these little clean-out doors here. There's that side, and that side. Those things are about impossible to close with seed in there, so if I would have started that, we would have had to basically empty it, and then there would have been a pile of beans on the ground. Aha! I won one! I didn't... I didn't really win it. I didn't lose one. How about that? We've got seed in the planter! Let's go! In the box, back box empty down. I got, um, there's a little talc left in the talc, a talc applicator from wheat, but I put some of that dust we have in there. It's a uh, soybean based seed lubricant. Uh, I don't have any of my uh, grow pack stuff yet, the um, planter box inoculant, but that's all right. We inoculated these beans this morning, they'll be fine. Got that side full, so this field is uh, about 75 acres and should take right at two boxes, 80 units of beans to plant. Um, I had to do a little math on the planting rate, but we're gonna shoot for around 150,000. Three thirty. 
Oh yeah, let's do this. Let's do it, let's do it, let's do it. Brock's not quite done yet, but he is getting close. And uh, I wanted him to finish before we get started, but. I'm gonna play some beans today. Oh yeah, March 25th, 2024. So soybeans going in the ground. Uh, we gotta get our monitor set up here. Come on, fire, there we go. Be good for this tractor to run for a few hours and get the battery all charged up. Whew. Heading back to the field here. Uh, I played around with some home screen, home page screens on the monitor here. We're definitely going to have to tweak those out quite a bit, the layouts. Um, it's a nice display. There's a lot of space to see stuff, which is awesome. But uh, I just, I don't know what is the important things. Obviously, we need the monitor page and I would like a guidance uh, screen. Um, but yeah, I just I haven't taken the time to kind of go through and see what all other things that we need to have on there. It would be nice to have somewhere to turn on and off the section control. So maybe we'll look for that. But um, we'll, we can tweak those things in the field. So we're gonna go back, uh, get the planter unfolded, make a dry run without putting seed in the ground. Just get out and look and make sure everything's level and the openers are, um, like they're supposed to be. I don't know how to explain it. Um, we can dig a little bit for depth, although with no seed, it's going to be a little bit difficult. And just test things, and then we'll throw some seed in the ground. Oh, I didn't bring a thermometer. Ah, bummer. Added benefit to doing this in March is we get all the bugs worked out of the system. So we bought this new display, right? And this was part of the G5 Essentials Kit. Uh, which means that the display itself does not have an auto track activation, section control, or anything. It is just a display. Um, you have to buy a subscription every year for that. And so um, the first year, it's well, it's $2,000 a year. The first year you have to buy it. I just assumed that it would be all ready to go, but it is. the display is telling me that there's no auto track activation on it. So I put a call into the dealer's call center and um, his computer promptly crashed apparently and so I'm waiting for him to uh, fi figure out what's going on and call me back and um, hopefully they just need to activate it on their end and then we can get going but it's all right we're fine we're fine it's March 25th we got plenty of time I'm getting a little frustrated they're not calling me back anyway we got the planter in the ground this will allow us to fill all the boxes with seed should Yep, we've got seed in the little mini hoppers now. In here, uh, I haven't rotated the meters yet to prime anything. These ends are a little uh, rough here because this is where we tiled last year and so they settled. It, the rest of the field's fine. Anyway, there's no seed in the ground. I'm just digging to see what our trench looks like. It's beautiful. Yeah, okay. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. I could plant without auto steer and just go plant. But I don't really want to do that. It's a good thing it's March 25th, like I said. So uh, the other thing I can do is just go get a 2630 and run on one of the old monitors, and that would work fine too. So uh, maybe we'll do that. We're gonna have some volunteer corn there. That's from the corn that we had to knock over when we did the tiling, because we tiled that farm and these these tile lines here. Like there's one right there. We ran them all the way across the lane up into these end rows, kind of where those pieces of tile are laying over there. We should go pick those up um, and help drain these ends because these ends had a pocket here that was wet and up there they were wet. So we fixed them, but when you tile something like that, especially across the rows, it takes a couple years for it to get worked out. On the bright side, the sun came out and it's really warm out. Like this is perfect planting weather. I know it's not gonna last, but for now, it's perfect. Well, that is total crap. Um, it's been over half an hour since I called them and I called back and just trying to figure out what the heck is going on. And he says his computer system is still down. He blamed it on John Deere's end and not his end and there's nothing he can do about it. And I said, okay, so put my 2630 back in here then. And he said, yeah, I guess. Freaking great. Okay. So I'm going to go to 2630. That's ridiculous. But what am I supposed to do? Guess we'll go old school. 
2630 style. It'll work just fine. I um, just switched this cable though to my MTG and that one doesn't plug into this display. It plugs into the new display. So now we don't have our wireless data transfer, which means I've got to get everything off of this with a thumb drive. It's fine. That's no big deal. I can do that. Um, it's just, you know, paid for it. We've got that. It's, it'd be nice to use it. Okay, we are um, priming our seed meters here. I see beans falling out, so we should be good to go there. We're going to start with these end rows and then start on this side of the field where we started disking, and uh, we'll see how it goes. So we're going to have to stop a number of times as we get going here just to check depth, check all kinds of things, and make sure that we're uh, doing a good job. I know it's March, but we still want to do a good job, right? Okay, uh, check number one. We've got seed going in the ground, but it says the middle rows are not planting for some reason. So we're going to, one, verify that we are planting in the rest of the rows, and then, two, figure out why the center rows are not planting. Oh, we got way too much down for us. we got to back that off. And we're pretty deep. There's a bean right there. Eh, two inches. I want to plant deep. We're planting early. We want to plant them deep because... The deeper they are, the less temperature fluctuation there is. And we want consistent temperature. I know it's cold, but we want consistency. We might shallow it up a notch, though. That is... That's maybe two and a half to two and a quarter. So, all right, let's dig in the center. Let's see if we're getting any beans in here. Definitely too much down pressure. Okay, why? Why is the center not planting? I know why. We didn't pull our vacuum tube plugs. Can't get any vacuum. So, right here, there's a plug. Keeps the birds from getting in there and building nests when it's sitting in the barn. But it also keeps it from getting a vacuum. So that's why our middle rows weren't planting. Okay, so that fixes that. Uh, down pressure we can adjust from the cab. We're going to adjust that before we adjust depth. Um, yeah. Okay, progress. Okay, good news. The monitor said all the rows were planting that time, so uh, that's positive. I guess I'm right on that edge. thought I was a little too close, so let's start in the center here and make sure we've got seed. We got bugs. See that? That's what our insecticide is for. He doesn't look real healthy. There's a bean. Okay, so we got beans. Now, start looking at depth. Our sidewall looks much better. We're not um, pounding them into the ground or, you know, but yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that much better. We're not. Uh, smear in the sidewall. It's not as deformed as defined of a seed trench as we had. Yeah, inch and three quarters. We may even be a touch shallow here now. But I'm going to leave it for now. These end rows get a little pounded down. Okay, seed in the ground. Looks good to me. Let's dig over here. Theoretically, we should dig every row too lazy for that. <laughs> I mean, when you dig up half a dozen of them and they're all the same, what are you really going to find when you got them all set the same, right? Plus, I'm running out of daylight and I want to get this done. There. It's not too deep. Inch and three quarter to two inches. That's what I want. I don't want to go over two, but I don't want to be under an inch and three quarters. Okay, let's take a look at our frame. This is smiled up a little bit. That's because there's an edge, a ridge at the edge of the field. Not worried about that. Look at my parallel arms on everything. Um, this one's tipped back a little bit, but the inside ones are tipped up a little bit because of just the way that it's sitting right now. I think we could lower our tongue just a little bit. We'll lower our three-point pitch down. Make it run a little leveler. Okay, well, it is um, 
It's later in the day than I wanted it to be when we're getting out here, but we're planting and we're making dust. Beans going in the ground. It's relatively warm outside, ground condition or uh, air conditions. Ground is it's not. It is cold, but it's pretty dry. And this is where we started working. And I knew, giving it a little time to air out, it would um, it would dry off. And then you know the those no-till colders run through and bust apart any little clods that there are. And uh, it plants really nice. So we're gonna make this pass down, do the ends on the other side, and, and keep moving. We'll stop and, and check it one or two more times just to make sure everything is still good. Um, but yeah, that's the benefit of doing heavy off-season preventative maintenance is that when you get out to the field, things just work. And I know it's ironic that I'm saying that, using that display, um, but the planter itself is working, right? So we go through and wash all those meters and we make sure that our openers are good and they're set right and that all the bearings are good and the gauge wheels are good and we don't have to screw around making sure that that stuff is working now because... We've already done all of that. Oh, we'll take another look here. A lot of trash. I often wondered about getting row cleaners for this planter, but row cleaners for a 15 inch row planter are sort of hard to do. Well, I saw a beam. Where did the rest of them go? Oh, there it is. Yeah, we're definitely not too deep. I don't like having uh, the residue and stuff down in the seed trench. It's okay if it's on top of it, but I think our down pressure may be a little light now. Yeah, definitely that one's too shallow. I went from 400 pounds down to 150. We could find something in the middle. That one's a little light. We're gonna we're gonna sock them down in a little bit farther. I want to. Are we at two there? No, that's not two. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna turn our down pressure back up to maybe 250, and uh, we'll see. But. For the most part, we got beans in the ground. They're gonna grow. I hope eventually, maybe. Yeah, that one's not terrible. They're just a touch shallow, and so there's really, I mean, there's there's depth control and then there's downforce, and they're two different things, but they're related, right? Because if our if we don't have enough downforce. To get our gauge wheels firmly planted on the ground and I shouldn't be able to spin them that easily uh, then you're not going to get them in deep enough you're not going to get them to depth because you're not on your depth stops the other thing you can do is adjust these depth stops but see how I can wiggle that that means we're not pushing them into the ground far enough so I think our setting is right it's just we we let up too much on the downforce so that's this number here we'll just hit that target we'll bump it up to 250. Try that. All right, off we go. 75 acres here. It should take me about four hours to plant this, maybe a little bit more. I mean, it's, we're pushing nine o'clock at this point to get done, or maybe even later. It might be 10. So, uh, yeah, it's later than I wanted it to be. Okay, well, we've got our planter working. We're gonna just keep cruising across here. Brock, why do we want to plant beans in March? Because they worked out in the past. Why not? <laughs> why not? Okay, well that's that's true. What um what's the advantage to planting beans early? They can grow longer. I, mean, I just said it. We were having a conversation about double crop beans and I just said it. Sunlight capture. Right? Yep. So double crop beans you want to plant narrower rows to capture the sunlight faster. By planting these beans earlier, now they're not going to grow real fast, right? They're going to sit here and um, not come up. Hopefully, until the first week of May. That's that's kind of the goal, depending on the weather and everything. But I don't really want these beans to come out of the ground for a month, because once they come out of the ground, they are susceptible to a frost, 
and we don't want them to die from a frost. So best case scenario is that we get a frost, the last the last frost, and then it warms up and they just they just grow and they come up right after that. Um, but they should come up and start growing above ground before any of the beans that we would plant, say, the first week of May or Memorial Day, because they'll be up well before that. And what that allows them to do is capture more sunlight. The longest days of the year are in June, right? Summer solstice, June 21st, it's the longest day of the year. The more leaf tissue that we can have out there on June 21st, the more sunlight that we capture really the whole month of June. And so if we can get these beans to start canopy in towards the beginning of June, all of a sudden we've gotten a lot more of a solar factory there capturing that sunlight. That is why I firmly believe that the number one thing you can do to increase soybean yields is to plant them earlier. Now March 25th is a little crazy. Yes, I get it. I know we're way, way early, but you can't look at this as this is my early planted beans and they're going to replace the beans that I would have planted say the 20th of April because it's not those ones that are getting replaced. It's the ones that we would plant last that are getting replaced, right? I'm still going to plant beans on the 20th of April if I can. Uh, but what I'm not going to have then is as many acres to do so I should be done before Memorial Day or before the 10th of June or God forbid the 20th of June. Uh, and those are the beans that really miss out on that sunlight. So. In my mind, we're planting more beans in that early window, which has been very beneficial to yield for us. Um, I don't think these beans will be better than the beans I plant the 15th of April, the 20th of April. They may be better than the beans that I plant the 30th of April, the 10th of May, the 20th of May, because they'll have more opportunity to capture that sunlight. So, you know, am I going to go crazy here and plant a thousand acres or half of our beans or anything like that? No, I'm not. Um, but we did this two years ago in this exact spot, this field right here. I think it was the next planter pass because I skipped the first three and we're on number three. Uh, and we planted them on the 17th of May. It was even earlier than this. And they yielded 70 bushel of the acre. They lived, they survived multiple frosts the first two weeks of May, 10 days of May. I've got a neighbor that raises strawberries and uh, late frost can be extremely detrimental to the strawberry yields. And so one of the things they do to prevent that is irrigate. They water their strawberries at night because if the water is liquid, it's not frozen. It's not freezing the berries or the flowers, the blooms off of uh, the strawberry plants. And so they just run it all night when we have those um, 28 degree nights, the maybe 25 degree nights, the 30 degree nights, trying to prevent that from happening. Well, two years ago when we had beans here that were coming out of the ground the first week of May, I can't irrigate them. Um, they watered their beans 10, I believe 10 of the first 12 nights of May for frost prevention. And these beans lived through that. So that gave me a ton of confidence that if they can do that, they'll probably gonna make it. Now, you never know, we could get a late frost and they could all die. Um, but I'm willing to take that chance because the 17 acres that I planted two years ago right here lived and did well so now we're, we're expanding that a little bit, right? Instead of part of the field, we're going to plant the whole field. Having that strip of 17 acres out here created some management issues for me later in the season with herbicides and weed control, with um, harvest timing because we wanted to plant wheat here. Maybe it was three years ago because we planted wheat that fall. Might have been three years ago. Anyway, um, it, just, it just created some challenges that... By planting the whole field, we won't have those. Now, I don't have a good side-by-side -side comparison of did later planted beans yield better or worse than these because there'll be other variables like varieties and stuff like that, but um, it's an experiment, right? If you're not learning something and you're not trying new things, how are you gonna get better? And this is one of the ways that I feel we can do things better. Now, I'm not saying I wanna plant all my beans in March ever, but I wanna get started sooner. And whether that's the 10th of April, the 20th of April, or what, uh, I need to be planting beans before the 1st of May. Um, for us here, we deal with water, too much water, more than too little water. And so you plant when you can, right? Ground conditions dictate everything. Like I said earlier in this video, I will plant into cold soils all day. I will not plant into wet soils. And right now we have really good ground conditions. So uh, when it rains tonight, we'll be out of the fields for a while next chance we get, maybe we'll plant another field. 
uh, once we get to maybe the 10th of April, full bore. As soon as we can plant, I'll go as much as we can. I'm not holding back anymore at that point. So, anyway, that's why. That was long. Six minutes. I'm sorry. Okay, now that we've discussed why, Brock's, Brock's been riding with me. I told him, hey, make a round for me so I can do my cinematic photography. Yeah, something like that. Enjoy. Want to see how a meter works? See those beams going around in there? It's really hard to run next to this thing. All right, let's jump on. Now from here, though. into the ground. You can't see very good down in between the openers there, but there's our no-till colder. And then our, our seed discs are down there opening the slot up. The gauge wheels hold the unit up into the proper depth. And then the seed falls out down in there. And the closing wheels then pinch the dirt back in on top of it. It's pretty cool, and it works. So the beans start up in these big uh, central commodity system tanks here. And then there's a big fan down in front here. That silver one. Then it blows air through the big uh, manifold underneath, the big air hose. And then it blows seed through each one of these tubes. Each one of those tubes runs to the row unit and that's where the beans get into the the bottom of that uh, hopper mini hopper so that they can get sucked up by the seed meter the other hose on each one is the vacuum hose that goes out to a manifold where it goes up to the center bar that is a manifold and then there's a back fan on that side there's a back fan on that side and that's sucking air which holds the beans to that plate This planter is a 1790, and it is a uh, cable drive or a pro shaft hydraulic drive. So that's a hydraulic motor, turns those uh, uh, hex shafts, chains, and then there's a cable right here that turns the meter. Now this is an electric clutch. Watch what happens when we get to the end here. You'll see that stop turning before we lift the planter out of the ground. We're getting close. I think, yeah. So when we get to where we've already planted the end rows, there, it stopped turning. So now there's no beans coming out and we don't have any overlap. Now he's turning around. Oh, I'm drawing I was like, what the heck is that? Sets the planter down. They're not turning, not turning, not, there it goes. Starts putting beans in the ground when we get to the, the overlap there. So, pretty awesome. Oh, I didn't even notice it earlier. We happen to be right next to one of our spoke gauge wheels. You can see the opener in there a little bit better. Yeah, not great. But you can only see through there. See the hub for the opener. Yeah. Cool. That's how the planter works.
too old and out of shape for that. Anyway, thanks Brock for everything today. Driving tractor and uh, that around there so I can get some good camera shots. So he's heading home. Uh, he's got work tomorrow. I don't know if he'll be around. Maybe Wednesday. Definitely Thursday, but we'll see. So we're just going to keep planting here for a while. Let's get this done. Time for an update. Okay, we are, uh, what are we? 46 acres into this field. More than half done. There we go. 28 to go, roughly. Um, you guys see that green post over there? That one, right there? That is the state line. We've made it to the Ohio portion of the field. Ah, eh, probably a round ago, but I forgot the last time. So, yeah, uh, actually, the, the, the green post on this side of the road over there, you'll see there's a little granite marker down there on the bottom. That is the official state line, I guess. I don't know. Yeah, anyway, we're making progress. There is a massive difference between this planter and the 60 foot high speed corn planter. So uh, we would have been done a long time ago if I would have had the corn planter um, usable. And I would have used it if it was ready. Just needed to put 24 gauge wheels on, but I'm not really done with it in the shop. We've got other stuff coming. Our parts should be in, maybe tomorrow. That'd be awesome. Maybe we can go get them tomorrow. We'll see. Anyway, um, yeah. Bean planter's slow. Oh, well, I've got a minute. We've got something else I wanted to talk about today. Because um, I'm sure that somebody is going to ask this in the comments. Probably already have, so here's your answer. Crop insurance dates. We talked about crop insurance a couple weeks ago. Part of our crop insurance policy is a replant protection or coverage. So um, if we have to replant our crops, uh, the crop insurance adjuster would come out, look at the field, and say, yep, you needed to replant. They would pay us uh, a certain percentage of our policy. I don't remember how exactly that is calculated. It's not by any means the full guarantee, but it's there's a payment in there basically to cover the seed and the uh, uh, equipment costs and stuff like that. Now, in order to qualify for that, you have to plant within their deadline and their, their dates, I guess, or after their date. And so uh, for us here, our crop insurance date for soybeans I'm not 100% sure on this. I believe in Southern Michigan where we're at, it is um, April 20th in Ohio, Northern Ohio at least. It is April 15th, I think. So technically this field falls under two different dates. Either way, we're well before it. I don't care. All that means is that we don't have replant insurance uh, on these beans. So what? Um, my seed company, covers treated bean replant. So if we have to replant some of these beans, and there's a pretty decent chance we will have to do some, uh, they're going to cover the seed. The cover and the cost of the equipment, yeah, that's on us. That's that's the gamble that I am taking, I guess, and that's what I'll be out, the cost of running the tractor over the field. But uh, yeah, I don't, I'm not going to let the crop insurance companies tell me when I can and cannot do things uh, and how I should be planting and farming and, you know, when and all that stuff. The crop insurance date for beans has been moved up in the last year or two. Like it used to be like April 30th or even after that, um, and uh, that's just ridiculous. So, uh, yeah, yeah, I, I don't have replant coverage on these beans through my crop insurance, but I don't care. It doesn't matter. We've made it to the edge of the woods here. So I don't know what we got left for acres. 20, not quite, 15. Um, but the road's getting a little shorter here. I am uh, I'm hoping that we have enough seed. It was going to take right at 80 units to plant this field. That's what we put in. So we should be okay. But you never know. <laughs> it would be bad if we ran out like two acres short or something because I don't really have any paper bags to throw in and I don't really want to treat another box. And Then what do you do? Leave it until we normally plant? Come in and patch it? Or go find some something to throw in there? I don't know. Well, I was hoping to be done before we would need lights, but we're to the point where we could use some lights. It's not horribly dark, but it's dark enough. So 
that light just came on. That light is the low tank warning. We've got a pass and a half to do. Oh man, it's gonna be close. I don't know, I don't know, it's gonna be close. Okay, we made it up to the end here. We're right in the corner of the woods. Um, I'm gonna look in the tank and just level stuff off and see how much we've got. See if it looks like we're gonna make this pass or not. Not looking good from here. Definitely not looking good. Well, we'll level them off. Plant until we run out, and then... <laughs> that's exactly what I thought was gonna happen. Gosh dang it. But then we gotta make a decision. Do we go find some beans and finish it, or do we leave it until later and have our planting date test strip? Yeah, I don't know. It's possible. It's possible we'll make it. Maybe we'll drop our planting rate back a little bit in this one pass. <laughs> See what we can do. So we'll know when we're empty because the rows will stop planting. These bars will drop way down. We've made it halfway. <laughs> Gosh dang close. Oh, we're gonna make it. We're gonna make it. Oh no! Oh, there's one row. Sometimes okay, sometimes they hit a rock and it bounces the beans off and they stop planting. That's what that one was, because they jumped back up, so now it's planting again. We're gonna make it. We may get we may run out. It'd be a little light on the last ones, but we are gonna make it. Also, we've got a little sliver over there now that we've gotta fill in. This field's just not quite square. Cool, 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 cool. Well, there we go. We got our well, 74 and a half acres planted. Well, it wasn't by much. I turned around to get that little sliver and I just unchecked the section control just to let the thing plan out and we didn't make it. I don't know, a thousand feet, not even, no, not even that, 500 feet. Good deal. Came out exactly where we needed to, so. That's it, that's our March planted beans. We did a heck of a lot more than we did the last time. So, we got um, 70, 75.02 acres planted, it says. Now some of that's the overlap from this last one, but. Yeah, right at 75 acres. We'll see. Best case scenario now, so it's supposed to rain tonight. I'm gonna start in a little bit. Um, and then it's gonna be cooler after that. It says high of 59 tomorrow, but then highs in the upper 40s, maybe low 50s for the next 10 days at least. And uh, while that's not good soybean growing conditions, that's okay, that's kind of what we want. What I would like for it to happen is just to stay cool, stay right around 50 degrees or so, um, and then to start warming up once we get into the middle of April or the second week of April where they can start to grow. Uh, we should start seeing these beans sprout here in a week or two, uh, especially if we do get a little bit of warm temperatures, but I don't want them coming out of the ground. The worst thing that could happen, in my opinion, maybe not the worst, but a bad thing that would happen would be for us to get a week of 70, 75 degrees uh, the first week of April. These beans all come up and grow and they look great and then it turns cold the second half of April and we get a hard frost. That's what we don't want to happen. Um, so I don't want that instant warm up. I want it to be a nice slow warm up through April where then it just stays warm and we don't have a late frost. Wishful thinking, but we'll see. The beans are tougher than people think. The treatment will keep them from rotting in the ground and uh, I think we'll be okay. All right, that's back inside. We'll deal with our empty boxes some other time. Get our door closed here. Okay, I'm going home. However, first, I grabbed my soil thermometer. We're gonna run back to that field and pull a soil temp because I'm sure you guys are gonna ask me. All right. Two inch soil temp, right where the seed is. I don't think it's 64 degrees, but eh, 63, we'll give it a minute here. It might be sort of warm today, it was warm. Yeah, let's stay, 61. I'd be shocked if it's that warm. I thought for sure we were below 50. Yeah, it's not here, it's warm. 59. Looks like it's gonna settle in at 54 degrees, our two inch soil temperature. 
It's warmer than I would have thought. Let me see if I can stick it down to four. Right there. And we'll give it a minute again. See how much colder it is deeper. And this would be below the tillage layer too, so it hasn't been disturbed. Went down to 48. And it sat there long enough the light turned off, so. Yeah, it's wetter down there. Uh, which we know. But yeah, 48. Let you move it up a little bit. I said it was dry. All right, that's good. I'm going home. Thanks for watching today. If you enjoyed this content, make sure you subscribe. Give me a thumbs up. Um, just subscribe to follow along with how these beans do all year. This is we're going to be back here checking them all the time, and uh, it'll be interesting to follow this journey. See if our March 25th planted beans will make it or not. So. Um, have a great night, everybody. We'll see you tomorrow. Probably a seed treating day tomorrow.